All right. We're back. Saturday Night Special here live from uh, Jacksonville. And we thank you guys so much for uh, joining us. We thank you. I thank you. I haven't done this for a few weeks. It feels a little bit foreign, but uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad that we're doing this. We just had the very big um, uh, all out pay-per-view tonight. Mimosa Mayhem. Uh, if you saw, you saw me take a, a bump in the drink. <laughs> What a way to make a living, right? Um, and we're going to talk about that, talk about all the stuff that's been going on over the last uh, few weeks. Once again, you guys ask the questions, and I uh, will answer them. And I really uh, kind of missed doing this. I, I did a tape version a few weeks ago, um, which wasn't as good. It didn't have the same vibe to it, so I did my best uh, just to, uh, if, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. So I wanted to do it right after Mimosa Mayhem. So I can hang out with you guys. So here we are. And uh, Ken Endless, if you heard the new Star album, and the answer is yes. It's amazing. It's called Even God Believes. And they had a really cool um, listening party yesterday. See, my hair is still wet. I took a shower after I uh, after I uh, took the bump into the, into the mimosa. <laughs> all my gear is in a garbage bag right now. It's just all soaking wet and terrible. Um, my boots are all squelchy. But, hey, that's – what it takes to be a, a, a true professional. Um, but uh, I did uh, the new album, even God Believes, the new striper record. They had a live listening party uh, yesterday, and they had one today, and they have a couple more tomorrow. So go to striper.com, and you get a chance to have the band, see the bands, um, uh, play, they play the record, and they kind of talk about it. It's really, really cool. It's, it's only like eight bucks, too, so it's really cheap, and it's just really fun. So uh, go check out the new Striper record if you are a Striper fan. Even if you're not, uh, go check that out because it's some great rock and roll. And um, cool thing is we actually have uh, a sponsor now. <laughs> it took 21 weeks, and we have a real legit sponsor, Postmates. Happy to have them here. Uh, we're going to pay some bills right off the bat. Uh, you guys know before the pandemic I was traveling a lot which I was. I'm still kind of traveling now, but um, this is when AEW was in a different city every week. Fozzie was touring. Uh, and sometimes when you're on the road, it's just easier to have food delivered to your hotel. And that's why I love Postmates. Um, I love them even more right now because of what's going on in the world. Uh, and they created non-contact deliveries. I've been here in Jacksonville uh, since Wednesday, and I've been eating basically uh, Postmates uh, delivered food the whole time because there's still no room service really in the hotels. Um and so when I order from the local restaurants, Postmates just leaves them right outside my room door. Uh, and Postmates also has Postmates Pickup, which my family uses so we can have takeout uh, from some of our favorite places delivered right to our house. We try to order local at least once a week, support our neighborhood restaurants, support local businesses, help out during the pandemic. been really believing in doing that, and I've been doing it since March. Uh, and Postmates doesn't just deliver burgers and things, sushi and those sort of things. They actually make the life easier by picking up everything you need from Walgreens, 7-Eleven, once again, dropping it off outside your door. So all you got to do is download Postmates on iOS or Android, find your favorite food, and get anything you want delivered within the hour. Now, check this out. For a limited time, Postmates has given you guys $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. Think about that. $100 for free. Uh, to start your free uh, $100 for free delivery. Uh, to start that free delivery, download the app. Use my promo code Saturday night. That's it, Saturday night. Um, and you'll get $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. So if you order seven Postmates orders, there's that's seven deliveries are free. So anything you need, uh, uh, anything you need, it, Postmate it. And uh, we're really excited, like I said. So this is our um, our actual, I feel so honored that we actually have a sponsor here. So um, check out Postmates if you're uh, at home or if you're in a hotel room like I am. And uh, they will deliver it right to your door. So thank you to Postmates uh, for being with us and for being uh, kind of the first official sponsor here on uh, the Saturday Night Special, the 21st episode of the Saturday Night Special. Hard to believe we've been doing it for so long. But, yeah, so we're going to do like we always do and just get started answering uh, your questions. Uh, start off with Walter Klaus Meyer. Walter Klaus Meyer. It's a great, uh, great German rock and roll name. You savored every second of that bump into the orange tub, didn't you? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say savored it. Um, <laughs> you know, once again, it's, you get completely submerged and doused in it. And um, I think that uh, 
after taking two of, of, of oranges, orange punches, Superman punches, I didn't want to just be like floundering around in the, in the, in the drink, so to speak. Um, so it wasn't savoring. It was more like just kind of, wow. Uh, accepting the reality that I had lost and also selling his finish. Um, I'm really proud of the Mimosa Mayhem match. I thought it went as, as great as it possibly could have, uh, maybe even better. Because when I had the idea, um, it was very much uh, – I, I knew that it would seem weird in concept, and I knew that when I first mentioned it and first said it that uh, people would go, what? That doesn't make any sense. But I also knew um, after the first one that everybody would want to do it. Uh, because it's all about the, the, the drama and all about, um, you know, Stu Hart taught me when you have a gimmick match, use the gimmick. So what's the gimmick of the, of the, of the, of the Mimosa match? I've, I've explained this, before, but I was thinking like, what can we do? Like obviously orange juice is orange Cassidy. Champagne is Jericho. You combine those together. It's a Mimosa. It's a great Sunday morning drink or a great drink to have if you're about to take an international flight. Um, so what can we do? Well, hmm, yeah, you could get thrown into it. Like I actually started watching those FMW, uh, exploding barbed wire bomb death matches where there would be no ropes and the guy would be on the edge of the, of the apron and he would get hit and he'd be like, Whoa, and no, he doesn't. Whoa. And then finally he takes the bump off the apron into the barbed wire, which explodes. Well, maybe we could do something like that, but you're falling into the mimosa. You know, it's almost like a like a dunk tank idea when you're in high school and you can dunk tank Principal Weatherby, you know, by throwing the ball on the thing. And everybody wants to see it. and Everybody loves it when you finally get thrown in there. But I also wanted to uh, combine it with uh, pinfalls and submissions. So it's not all about that. So you can kind of go to it, forget about it for a while, bring it up again. Um, I thought about the coffin matches that, that Undertaker had. I thought about a Royal Rumble when you get thrown over the top rope and you skin the cat and your your one foot is kind of scraping the floor, and that's okay because you have both feet on the floor. And that's what we did with this, and that's why I was like, you know, you have to be completely you know submerged uh, in the bubbly, a.k.a. take a, a big bump in it. So um, I, I thought we had a lot of uh, a great kind of false finishes. Uh, thanks, Greg. Greg says, great show tonight. And... Um, you know, it's all about using the gimmick, like I said. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, um, I think you'll uh, enjoy it. Um, if, if, and once again, how many times um, do you have a chance to experience something for the first time in wrestling? And if you think about it, I've been in five that I can remember, maybe even more, but five first-time matches. Um, I was in the first Elimination Chamber. I was in the first uh, uh, Money in the Bank, which I helped create with Brian Gewirtz, so I created that one. Ambrose Asylum, I helped create that one as well. Uh, I was in the first Stadium Stampede match, helped create that, and uh, in the first Mimosa Mayhem match. And like I said, it's one of those ones that uh, at first you're thinking it's kind of weird, but after now everybody wants to do it. You know, I was talking to the Bucks after, like, that was so great, man. And I was like, you guys, I bet you guys want to have one now. They're like, yeah, imagine the stuff you guys could do. Take a Canadian into uh, into the drink so um it was a great time a great idea uh 14 weeks with orange cassidy earl gabriel faust slunga that's, uh, that's a lot of names after your feud with cassidy who do you want to feud with next um and just to go back to the orange cassidy feud, like i said tonight if you saw the promo that i did it wasn't a feud it wasn't an angle it wasn't a storyline it was an experiment can we get orange cassidy to the next level make him a main event draw in AW, and, and we did that. And I knew I knew that he had it in him, but we we painted, uh, you, you added a few different shades to him, uh, to that you can. Um, he's he's a more well-rounded character, not just the, the the lazy guy, but now he shows fire and he shows uh, some attitude, and he can do a promo, and he's a great babyface. He really is. So, um, you know, and like I said, fourteen weeks. It was the, the summer of orange, and. Um, it was really, really fun. Really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm glad I got to do it. It was an honor. And who would I like to feud with next? There's a lot of people. Actually, I know exactly who I'm going to be kind of feuding with next and who my next story is with because, once again, it's all about the stories. So uh, you'll find out on Wednesday. We'll you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue. The, that's kind of the blow-off of Jericho and Orange for now, and um, I'm sure we could always come back to it at some point. I mean, it's 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 we have great chemistry, and it's there. And um, – so anyways, uh, Jeff Hanna says, say hi to my buddy Devin and tell him 
He's a dork. He'll never pick up chicks. So <laughs> there you go. There you go, Jeff. You're welcome. Um, how much do you know about Bullet Bob Armstrong? And that's no, obviously, you mean K-N-O-W. Spelling, people. Spelling. Love Bullet Bob Armstrong. Obviously, Bullet passed away just this, this week. And um, he was the father of Brad Armstrong, who's passed away a few years ago as well. And Scott Armstrong, Steve Armstrong, and, of course, Brian Armstrong, a.k.a. Road Dog. And when I was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, I broke my forearm. You can see the scar. And it's hard to see. There you go. And, um, uh, you know, it was a different time. And the, and the only guy, my point is, the only guy who called me to check on me to see how my arm was, was, was Bob Armstrong. And, and he was just one of those type of guys, how's your, how's your arm doing? How's Jericho's arm doing? He asked Lance Storm all the time. And uh, I never forgot that. I also learned a lot about promos from Bob. And, uh, and not that he sat me down and taught me, but just by watching him. And I, he would show up when he had to do promos. I think at one time I remember somewhere and he left like a couple minutes and he shows up and uh, he's like, Corn Corny, you know, tell me what I need to say. And Jimmy's like, well, you say this, 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 and this. And he gives him a bunch of bullet points. And then Bob goes up there and he said, you know, this, 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 and this, and that, 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 and that, and blah, 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 that's as good as it gets. I'll see you later, Jimmy. He walks out the door. Uh, just to know that when you have the confidence, when you do that one take, and knowing that's all you need, you know, is, is one take. Um, so God bless Bull Bob Armstrong. He was a man's man in this uh, sport of gypsies, tramps, and thieves, and I think everyone would agree with that. So God bless you, Bob, and God bless you, Brad, too. Brad was a, a great worker. They never found the right spot for him, and he was one of those guys that his personality in the ring – Never mashed his personality out of the ring because Brad was one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet uh, as well. So God bless both of them and um, and uh, hope they're uh, enjoying their reunion. Hello, Chris. This is Cyber Chakraborty. Hello, Chris. Any possibility of Brock Lesnar making his AEW debut? Would you like to make a rival with him? You know, I, I was kind of thinking about that when people were saying, that oh, Brock Lesnar's a, a free agent. And I'm like, is he? Is he really? Or is he just not under contract? Because... Obviously, it would cost so much money to bring Brock in um, that it be, might be you know, you'd be questioning if you could even you know if you could justify that investment. But even so, even if you offer Brock you know a hundred quillion, hundred squillion dollars, Vince has you know two hundred squillion dollars in the bank, and I don't think he's going to um, just let Brock leave to come to AEW, and I don't think he's going to just let Brock leave to go to UFC either. I think it's just the game that they play. And, uh, you know, they're both very smart businessmen. And um, would we love to have Brock and AW? Yeah, sure. Great. I'd love to, to, to work with Brock. We've never had a match on TV ever. Um, and we have uh, <laughs> a lot of water under the bridge, shall we speak, that would probably add some extra fire to it. But I, I think Brock will, will be in, in WWE for as long as he wants to uh, to, to, to be in, in the business. So um, there you go. Uh, let's see what else we got going on over here. Um, gosh, like I said, it's so funny. I forgot how these things just move so fast. Pavel Martinez, hey, I'm from Mexico. Well, that's awesome. Uh, hey, I'm from uh, Winnipeg. Uh, Frank Jofo. What's up, Jofo? When's the last time you spoke to Kevin Owens? Great match tonight, Le Champion. Thanks, buddy. Um, I speak to Kevin um, from time to time, you know, definitely still friends and the only thing is is when you're on the road it takes you into into different places um you know and, and you're, you're in different areas so um you, you know, he's doing his gig and he's super busy and i'm doing my gig and i'm, I'm super busy as well so um you know uh i, I love kevin uh, he's kind of reinvigorated my passion for the business in 2016 because i was going to leave the WWE uh, in 2015, I never worked on TV. I just did uh, house shows, live events. And I was like, yeah, I'll go back for three months. And, and just, I can't remember what it was even for, for WrestleMania, maybe with AJ Styles or whatever it was supposed to be. And then, um, and then I just suddenly started working with Kevin. I realized right away, this guy's pretty funny and um, he's got the same type of mentality that I do about the wrestling business. And, um, I think I could do something with him. And suddenly I, I had so much fun with Kevin Owens. And I think once again, if you go back and look at our storyline, it was the best story uh, of, of the year, you know, uh, top three for sure. And it went once again, I think we started at SummerSlam and went all the way to, to the following April. So, I mean, that's what August, 
to, to July, whatever, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, 10 months, you know, eight to 10 months, whatever it was. So that's a long time story. And we had a lot of good times. So uh, nothing uh, but uh, love for Kevin. Uh, he's, he's a great guy and um, very, very talented. Can you please tell a story of working with Roddy Piper? I mean, I didn't work a lot with Roddy Piper. Obviously, we had the WrestleMania match, but Roddy was uh, kind of you know, spent at that point in time. And um, uh, we did a couple of really cool promos together, which were fun. Um, but we never really worked a lot together. But we did um, – <laughs> we had a couple of good promos, which I really loved. He, his last great promo, I think, was against was with me in Tacoma. And um, – I told him beforehand, like I was doing this thing that this in the movie, the wrestler was out and I was doing this gimmick where, um, uh, well, first I was supposed to work with Mickey Rourke. Uh, he was, uh, wanted to wrestle and Vince had worked out a deal to have him come work with me. Only problem was he wasn't supposed to announce it until after the Oscars. And he got onto the, the, the screen actors, guild awards, red carpet. He mentioned some of the wrestling Chris Jericho, um, and my wise cousin Chad texted me or called me, and he's like, "Hey, Mickey Rourke just said he's gonna be wrestling you." I'm like, "What? That's not what I've heard." I remember it was the Royal Rumble that we had in Detroit, so probably Royal Rumble 2009, maybe 10. And um, so after that was done, Vince calls me in his office and said, "You know, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, Mickey Rourke kind of let the cat out of the bag, and then you're gonna have a match." And I was like, "That's really great! Like, I'm really excited." And then of course his agents were furious about that because he's up for an Oscar, and you can't be, you know slumming it with the low lifes in WWE. So they had him pull out and it was just a big shit show with sucked. So Vince ended up changing it to be like, okay, well you, you hate the concept of the wrestler and hate these guys just holding on to the spotlight, uh, including uh, Ric Flair who couldn't wrestle at the time. Um, Roddy Piper, um, Jimmy Snuka. And then his other idea was Greg Valentine. And I was like, great for all those guys, but, who am I supposed to work with in this match? You know, and he's like, well, I said, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to have a good match because we're not supposed to have a good match. I'm like, well, I have to have somebody to work with. And that's why I suggest, had a couple of suggestions. And, and I think I said Jerry Lawler because he hadn't had a WrestleMania match. He's like, nope, the rules are uh, you have to be a WWE Hall of Famer and you had to have appeared in the first WrestleMania. And I said, well, whose rules are those? He's like, my rules. I'm like, okay, um, how about Ricky Steamboat? who had just come back to WWE, who was working as, a, as an agent, as a coach, producer. And he um, he's like, do we even own his name? Like, what what's the status on Ricky Steamboat? Because he had some kind of an issue with his ex-wife or something along those lines. And um, anyways, he did own the name Ricky Steamboat, and we put Steamboat in there. So it was, it was Snooka, Piper, and, uh, and, and Steamboat. And so we were doing promos with each and every one. And, and Jimmy was was never a great promo, and his was okay. The Steamboat one was really good. And then the Piper one, I think, was the last I remember. It was in Tacoma, Washington. And uh, we were just talking before, and I said, I want the Roddy Piper who um, was in the main event of WrestleMania 1. The Roddy Piper who, had you not done such a great job, you know, everyone attributes it to Hogan and Vince. But Piper, of course, was the catalyst because he was the bad guy. You need a good bad guy to, to, to be the foil for the good guy. And I said, I want that Roddy Piper, you know, the, the one, the one that knows, like I had just as much to do with this as Vince and Hogan, but I don't get the credit. And he came out and he had a bunch of notes written on his hand, um, which if you watch that, you might be able to see it. But um, unlike when Rock had written on his hand and Cena called him out for it, I was like, ah, I'm not going to call him out for this. But he kept this great promo talking about, you know, how, how holding on to the spotlight. And he's like, you know, I had this, 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 this kid come up to me, you know, I said, you know, I thank you, Roddy. You are my grandfather's favorite wrestler. We watched wrestling together. My grandfather loved watching. My grandfather passed away. So whenever I see you, I think of my grandfather. And, and, and thank you for doing that. And then he went off at like, you know, this is why I do this for the people. If I can just have one more person uh, thank me for, for, for bringing them closer to their family, that's why I do this. And he's crying. And it was such a great, uh, such a great promo. And then, then I started crying too. And then normally you kind of look down and you, you would punch him. And Vince did not want me to punch him. He just wanted me to kick him in the shin because that's such an asshole thing. We have 10,000 punches on the show, but who's going to kick somebody in the shin? So I kicked him in the shin. He fell down and he goes, you know, they give him a shot after that, kick him in the head or something like that. But it definitely was the last great promo that, uh, that Roddy Piper ever, ever cut. Um, 
And there's another time, I think the first time we worked together, he was, he was, he was at a house show like in Victoria. And, um, he was like, kind of like my, uh, manager for the night or something like this. And he was on the side of the apron leading the fans, like getting the fans to get into it. And he was chanting, Y2K, Y2K. <laughs> and he was trying to make a joke. It was like, Y2J. And by the way, to the fucking assholes that were chanting Y2J tonight, first of all, that's 20 years old. I don't, they didn't call me Y2J when I was in WWE. You know, it was 20 years old. Don't chant Y2J. It's not, it's not cool. It, it, it's not if you're trying to cheer for me, chant something else. If you're trying to boo me, just boo me. But Y2J, it's like, oh, my gosh. It'd be like you know, going to see freaking Metallica and then just chanting Kill Em All. It's like, yeah, yeah, we get it. We're glad you like Kill Em All. But here we are now on the Hardwired Tour. So quit chanting that. It really bugs me. So if you try to get under my skin as a heel, you're not helping the cause. So stop it. I'll just do this to you. And people always go, why do you have a finger? I'm chatting. Why do you, Jay? Yeah, exactly. Why do you have his ass? <laughs> uh, Sean Waters, my daughter will be 12 soon. Who lives with her mom. I'm doing online classes and work full time. Always wanted to know, since you've been a dad, how do you spend time with your kids so far? FaceTime and texting. Outside. Yeah, my, my kids grew up kind of with me not being around. So um, we, uh, uh, you know, the texting is the way. We never FaceTime. Nobody in my family was, and they're all teenagers now too. And, um, you know, uh, it's a different world now than it was when they were younger, but my family is great. Uh, I love them. I love hanging out with them. And, uh, most people are staying here, um, for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I'm going home and coming back on Wednesday for TV again. Cause I don't want to stay here. I want to rather go home and hang out with my kids and my wife. So there you go. Um, why did Jay maybe 20 years old, Chris, uh, maybe you're trying to write Y2J, you son of a bitch. It's still what people think of when they think of you. Oh, oh okay. Y2J may be 20 years old, but it's still what people think when they think of you. I hope not. That would tell me that everything I've done since then uh, it doesn't uh, mean anything. You know, I mean, I had 15 other uh, catchphrases and names and that sort of thing uh, in WWE. Like, I would say the end of Y2J was basically 2005. So you're 15 years out of... Um, out of uh, out of uh, whack, shall we say? Uh, let's see what else we got going on over here. Um, like I said, these things go by so fast. Um, there we go. Sorry, guys. I'm a little bit out of practice because you guys uh, we were off for a couple of weeks. Do you plan on making more bubbly with, with knocking point? And the easy answer for that is is yes. Um, yeah, we, uh, we sold out 30,000 bottles of the original bubbly in about six months and we wanted to make it like, this is it. If you don't buy it now, you won't get another chance to get it. But of course, obviously it went by so fast that so we wanted to try and create something, uh, different and we have, so, um, whole new design, whole new label and colors. It's almost like a, collect a collector's edition. If you liked the first one, now there's a second one to add to it that will, you know, fill out your whole bar area. So uh, we found that people really enjoyed the taste of it. And that's something that at first, like we, we, we had to um, get this stuff out so quickly that I was like, well, you know, it, 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 as long as, um, you know, it doesn't taste like swill, like we just got to get up. But they actually made a really great tasting champagne. Actually, it's not champagne. Champagne is only made in a certain area of France called Champagne. So if it's not from that city in France, you can't call it Champagne. It's sparkling wine. So something I learned from having a, a little bit of the bubbly. Um, what happened to the lexicon of Le Champion? Um, well, that was a one-time thing because uh, Tony wanted me to have one more title match before the end of the year. So I was making a list of, of people that I would uh, allow myself to wrestle. And it was really funny. I remember, uh, Scorpio Sky, any member of the Scorpions, uh, the Scorpion King, whatever the hell I said. It was fun. And that, it was kind of like the list of Jericho. Obviously, I can't say that, nor would I. Um, so it's a lexicon. It's a list of words. 
which Excalibur and I had an argument with for years. But yeah, Lexicon of Le Champion. So that was a, probably a one-time thing. I, I might bust it out again, but I love when people are like, oh yeah, you're just copying WWE and you can't think of new material. I'm like, no, I can think of new material. And that's why this is the Lexicon of Le Champion. And it fit, just like the Momosa Mayhem match. Why did I think of it? Because it's Orange Cassidy, Chris Jericho, Orange Juice, sparkling wine, champagne. You put them together, it's a mimosa. It makes perfect sense. It fits the angle and the storyline. So that's very important when you're putting together a wrestling, uh, a wrestling story, wrestling uh, program. Who's your favorite KISS member? Um, Paul Stanley, by far. I think a better question would be who's your second favorite? Oh, Gene. Yeah. Who's your favorite KISS member that's not Paul or Gene? Uh, Bruce Kulik. I think Bruce is the best uh, guitar player in KISS history. And he's super humble. He's a super great guy. And he played on Quarantine. So go check out the Heart of Chrome video um, featuring Bruce Kulik. And uh, also the Wheel Blocks video just crossed 100,000 views as well. So lots of great stuff keeping busy in the pandemic during the lockdown. But also, too, uh, since, since we've seen you last, I recorded eight new songs. Uh, with, no, we got, we're up to nine songs now um, done with Fozzie. I have three more to sing. And then I'm done my work. Um, so Johnny Andrews, our producer, came to um, Tampa and I set up a thing. I have a theater that I built in my house with high ceilings. And that was, you know, apparently perfect to record in. And he came and he stayed for seven days. We tracked six songs, six and a half songs. We already had, no, wait, we tracked five and a half songs. And we already had three and a half in the can. So it equals nine. So I'm excited. It's great, great stuff. Uh, will we ever, Scott Macchiotti, Macchiotti, will we ever see more um, Bubbly Bunch skits? Um, I don't know. That was during a very uh, interesting time. That's when we had to film four weeks of shows in one day in April in Atlanta. And then I wanted to, I just did the commentary because I was like, well, let's not worry about what I'm going to do. I got to be on the show. I, that's the week that, that we did the release the Hounds promo. And I was at home in Tampa, and I and then and and Tampa shut down, Florida shut down. So I called Tony Khan. I remember it's like ten oh five, after Dynamite was done that night. And I'm like, dude, what what are we gonna do? He's I'm writing TV right now for six weeks, is what it was at the time. And um, I'm like, well, I'll be there tomorrow. He's gonna come. I'm like, of course I'm gonna come. I can't miss six weeks of TV. Like, not only am I valuable to the show, but even for me, like I can't take six weeks off. You you're gonna forget about Le Champion. And we can't let that happen. So um, I went and did the commentary, which was, was which was great. But I still wanted to do stuff. And I had just seen – how did that even come up? It was Santana's idea. So let's do something where we're all talking to each other on the phone. And that's kind of how the first one went. And then Kevin Sullivan, uh, not the wrestler, you know, our production guru, genius, showed me the um, that fight tape where a bunch of friends were punching each other. And I was like, well, that's great. But maybe we should do that with the inner circle. But then let's um, let's kind of uh, see if we can get some, you know, some cameos, some some other people. I think I've told this story before. That's where we got Lou Ferrigno and James Garrett. Said, remember that? How about when Tiger King was all the big thing? That seems like ten fucking years ago now. That was at the beginning of this whole thing. And um, uh, and then the flim flam one was because my 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 daughters and my niece are TikTok, TikToking, and I was like. Um, well, I can't use TikTok, so I'll call it Flim Flam because I had said that on, on, on commentary. Look at all this fancy Flim Flam. So uh, I, I thought it was going to be the next big thing. I wouldn't trademark Flim Flam, and we had the logo for Flim Flam. This is going to be huge. Nobody ever fucking mentioned it again. <laughs> but I do have the trademark for Flim Flam if anybody wants it. <gasps> Excuse me. Shane Simmons, you look like a Beastie Boys fan. Um, well, it's because I'm a Beastie Boys fan. I love Paul's Boutique, uh, one of my favorite albums. And I think that um, that's the album where uh, that's the, has the most samples in, in maybe like record history. And I'm not, don't quote me on that, but apparently there's so many samples on that record that right after that, um, around that time frame, uh, Wild Thing came out. And um, that's obviously it's a Van Halen riff. And that was like the biggest selling single at the time ever, like, I don't know, 5 million singles sold or something. And then that's when Eddie was kind of like, well, why don't we get credit for this riff? And then there's this beastie boys thing. I think that was kind of where sampling, no one really had any type of a handle on it. 
And after those records came out, suddenly you weren't allowed to sample anymore. So, um, but I love, uh, I love um, that record, Paul's Boutique. Obviously, you, you can't grow up in the 80s and not love License to Ill. I also love uh, Check Your Head. Um, so a big fan of the Beastie Boys. I wish they would go back on tour, and I hate to say this, but with Kid Rock is maybe, you know, um, Adam, was it Adam Horowitz that passed away? Or Adam, Adam Yock, yeah, um, Ad Rock, I think. Um, but you probably can't do that. But it sure would be cool to see see them go out one more time. So, uh, will you do Schmodown again? I love doing Schmodown. I had a a, a trivia um, battle. Schmodown is is this is this place? Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, what's what am I thinking? It's kind of like a a company. A, a, a website, whatever, an entertainment conglomerate that does, they specialize in movie trivia. So I was wanting to do it for a while. Jen Decker, who works in AW, was there. And then, of course, Roxy Stryer, um, who I'd done some interviews with, she was kind of getting me into it as well. And um, I was like, sure, I'd love to do it. So they put me on there with Kevin Smith. If you guys haven't seen this, you can go find it. It's Google uh, Kevin Smith versus Chris Jericho, Schmodown. You can see how it's spelled right there. And I'm like, I'm going to get destroyed. I'm going to get fucking destroyed, like in a movie trivia contest with Kevin Smith, whose job it is to make movies. But Kevin's, you know, great guy, great friend. I thought, yeah, I'll do it for the hang. So I go and do it. And suddenly, like, holy shit, like I'm almost winning. Like, I don't think there was ever a point where I was winning, but we were tied. Like, I was getting close. And there was actually even a Kevin Smith category on the on the docket. Like, how can I be in a movie trivia uh, showdown with Kevin Smith, and one of the topics is Kevin Smith. And there's no Chris Jericho topic on there, but I went and uh, actually I got Kevin Smith and I got all the questions right. I just decimated it. It was awesome. So um, we got down to the bare wire and it was 19 to 19, sudden death. And then finally I answered a question. I said the answer was two faced, and the answer was the penguin, and I, I lost. But I came that close to beating Kevin Smith in a movie trivia contest. I'm going to take great pride in that. All right. I'm, uh, am I crazy for thinking Chase the Grail is one of the best Fozzie albums out there? Any deep cuts on that album that you love or have never played live, et cetera? Well, that's the one Fozzie record that we still haven't been able to get up on streaming. It's very much – it should be time. It was 10 years ago. I have to call Mark, Mark Willis, our, uh, our manager, and find out. I think after 10 years you get the masters back, which means you can do what you want with them. And Chasing the Grail also was released through my friend John's uh, record company in Australia. So we're kind of caught in the middle of who really owns the record, one of those stupid things. But I loved playing – we used to play Under Black and Skies from that record and uh, Grail, um, uh, Martyr No More, Let the Maddest Begin, Paraskaveda Catriophobia, which is the best Iron Maiden title that was never an Iron Maiden title. That, uh, that's uh, Fear of Friday the 13th, Paraskaveda Catriophobia. And we did Pray for Blood, which was actually Luther's catchphrase in Japan. That's where I got that from. I think those are all the ones. Oh, yeah, of course, God Pounds His Nails. So we played seven of those songs over the years. And then what happened was we kind of kept Martyr No More and, and, and God Pounds His Nails in the set. But then as... When we, after we did Sin and Bones, and then we did Do You Want to Start a War, and then we did Judas, suddenly those songs were so much more advanced and catchy and, and better um, that it didn't feel the same to play, you know, Madness or Martyr anymore. So, so the last one that was in the set, I remember at the beginning of the Judas tour, was God Pounds His Nails. And that one just didn't, it just didn't, it just didn't fit anymore. So um, those, uh, um, songs are kind of you know i'm sure you know metallica does it too there's certain albums they don't play anything from anymore but once in a while they bust it out so maybe we could do that on the cruise maybe bust out god pounds his nails again or something just for fun do you think carol baskin will dance to eye of the tiger and dance with the stars is she on dance with the stars there's no way that they put her on they're too controversial my wife amanda's birthday will watch you give a shout out please help a brother amanda happy birthday from ryan rubel um oh this is a drag what? Oh, no. This is the bad thing about the stupid fucking coronavirus. Any thoughts on the Chameleon Club closing? Where are we going to see you? Chameleon Club is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm actually even going to take a screenshot of this and text this to um, Rich Ward and Mark Willis. 
um, our manager, and of course, Rich from Fozzie. Um, Chameleon Club was, was, a, was a great club that uh, was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was kind of near Hershey, something like that. And it was, um, gosh, I played there so many times. I even played with Metal Legions. Uh, we did the, a short tour. And it's there's the dressing room is upstairs, and you can see a th- window down. Last time we did it, we sold it out to 600 people. And it's one of those ones that's a long club. And uh, I remember the one time we played, uh, our drummer Frank was looking through the window and was like, hmm, not a bad crowd for Saturday night. Pretty good for Saturday night. I'm like, isn't that the night people go to concerts? Like, it's not like you're saying, like, that's not a bad crowd for, you know, Wednesday night. Not a bad crowd for Christmas Eve. Not a bad crowd for Saturday night. It's like, yeah, there better be a not a bad crowd for Saturday night. Jeez Louise. Um, <laughs> so that's a drag that is closed, man. That's a good club. Sorry to hear that, guys. Uh, will Foz ever come back to the UK? We love the UK. We've played there many times. We would love to uh, come back there. Unfortunately, uh, who knows when we can do that. So we always have a great time uh, in the UK, as you guys know. Once again, I'll say it again. The UK was one of the first countries that really embraced Fozzie as, as a headlining big-time act before the States ever did. So thank you to everybody in the UK, more specifically England was where that happened, but we love playing in Scotland and, and Wales. And I know part of the UK, we love going to Ireland as well uh, whenever we're over in that in that uh, neck of the woods. Best Ozzy Osbourne album? Oh, my gosh, uh, Diary of a Madman. No doubt about it, Diary of a Madman, I have to say. Um, I also really like No More Tears, Holds Up. I'm going to have to do an Ozzy song tonight for the sing-along. What do you guys think? Any requests on that? Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, what do you think of Adam Cole? There's a good one. I'm trying to get you to show that. Uh, Jay Paradowski. Uh, yeah, I never met Adam Cole, I don't think, until uh, AEW. He's come to a few of our shows. He's obviously um, uh, 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 Britt Baker's boyfriend. What a great guy. Sweetheart of a guy. Great worker. Um love to uh work with him you know at some point if if the cards ever align um but uh, yeah congratulations to all his success will you do the mass singer i was asked to be on the first season of, of the mass singer and uh much like the mimosa mayhem when i first heard the concept i thought that's stupid this is a dumb idea and then it goes and becomes the biggest fucking show <laughs> yeah in america and i'm like Hey guys, you want me to come do it? And they're like, eh, maybe. So uh, yes, I would do it if they asked me, but they haven't since the first season. Any chance to do another horror movie show on the pod? Loved hearing Joe Bug Briggs on the pod. Love seeing the last round. I would love to do another horror movie um, podcast. Maybe one with uh, Darcy the Mail Girl. She knows everything about horror movies. That might be a fun one. I just actually um, did a documentary called In Search of Darkness Part 2. In Search of, In Search of Darkness Part 1 came out, I think, last year. And Corey Taylor was kind of the one of the faces of the uh, of the movie. And now for the Part 2, I'm one of the faces, kind of like the host uh, of, of the DVD. So I'm excited about that. That's going to be coming out soon. That actually allowed me to come back to L.A. a couple of weeks ago. First time I've been in L.A. since March to, to do the filming for it. It was awesome. So... Um, and I would love, I actually just got a call the other day to do Joe Bob again, but the movie they're asking me to do is, wow. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, when your career is over, what do you want people to remember about Chris, Chris Jericho? I would love people to remember that I always did uh, everything that I could to make sure that people had a great time um, and always went the extra mile, never phoned anything in. And... Um, took great pride in the fact that, that I was always able to reinvent myself, like really take great pride in that and will never rest on my laurels and will never be a nostalgia. That's what the YT just fucking pisses me off. Like it shouldn't, I'm not mad at it. If you guys want to come and say it, great. Knock yourselves out. It doesn't help AEW. It doesn't help me is what I'm saying. It just makes people think of WWE. So if that's what you want to do, uh, you paid your money, you can chant what you want. No problems at all. Um, and obviously, that was it was a great moment in time. I loved it. But I also love the demo god and Le Champion. I love the fact that, you know, here we are in AEW in 2020, drawing, you know, almost a million viewers a week in the middle of a pandemic, you know, and having the first uh, uh, live crowds back. You know, we had, I think, 750 people there tonight. It was just 
it, it was just an honor. And the thing is, too, here's another thing. We, we mic the crowd. It's harder to hear on TV, but I'll tell you the reason why. It's the same thing sometimes when you when when you when you watch a WrestleMania in an outdoor stadium, it doesn't seem as loud because the sound goes up. And when there's no roof, it it doesn't come down. Like if you're in an arena, it hits the roof, it comes down, it, it permeates the room. When people are cheering, especially if they're in the upper deck, the sound goes up rather than down into the the camera area. But man, we feel them. Trust me, we feel them. And they were feeling it tonight in the Mimosa match. It was it was great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So um, uh, that was pretty killer. So. Um, uh, Wonton, go fuck yourself. How does that sound? You're blocked. Uh, Eric Gee, hey, Demo God, when are we going to be able to purchase a Saturday Night Special shirt or hat or merch? That's a good idea. I should maybe do some Saturday Night Special. I'll, uh, I'll um, contact Pro Wrestling Tees and see if we can figure something out. Colt Jensen, besides your match tonight, what was your favorite match? Um, wow, there's, I thought our pay per view had a couple. I mean, obviously, the, the, the uh, broken rules match. Matt, Matt is okay, by the way, but he was he was not for a loop for sure. Um, that obviously didn't pan out the way that it, that we wished it could have. Um, the casino battle rail had some some issues to it as well, with different guys, you know, uh, almost hurting themselves and that sort of thing, and and, and you know, just bad luck. But uh, I thought the the opening match, uh, the opening live match of. of Express Young Bucks was excellent. I thought Sheeta versus uh, Thunder Rosa was excellent. I thought Kenny and uh, Hangman versus FTR was amazing. I was very proud of the uh, of the um, Mimosa Mayhem, and I really enjoyed Moxley and MGF as well. And I thought I liked the way they 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 ran that match. They did it kind of like we did in the Mimosa Mayhem, where you, well, most Mayhem is completely different, but because we had the most of but they ran their match very much different from what you're used to seeing in every other match on the card so a uh, great show really enjoyed it and i uh, hope you guys did too um let's see what we got going on over here oh i already had that one um let's see what else we got going on uh, hey mama de luca how you doing happy birthday to mama de luca happy birthday to graham uh praying to see fozzy and flint Oh, we love the machine shop too. What a great place. Uh, are you an Alice Cooper fan? Yes, I am an Alice Cooper fan. Of course, Nita Strauss from Alice Cooper is in the wheel blocks with me. Um, Alice is, is a great guy. He's super funny. He's very charismatic, very personable, very friendly. Uh, I remember going to Alice Cooper in 1987. And what we used to do for shows, like if you didn't have the money to go to the shows, you would do what was called a door rush. And you would do these, for, like if Iron Maiden came, I'm buying a ticket. But if it was Alice Cooper with opening band Sword, I kind of want to go, but I don't have, you know, the, the, the 12 bucks or whatever it was to spend on, on the ticket. So um, I remember we did, we did this for, for Alice Cooper and Sword. We did it for Triumph and Kick Axe because I thought Triumph was okay, but I really wanted to see Kick Axe. And um, there's this guy called Jan. And everybody would kick in, you know, if the ticket was 15 bucks, you'd get, you know, five guys that would kick in three bucks each or whatever. Back in those days, a buck was a buck. So maybe you get four guys to kick in, you know, four bucks each, whatever, whatever. It was. And then you would give it to Jan and, and Jan, Jan's payment for what he was about to do was the ticket. He's in either way. So what Jan would do is he would get the ticket, go around and we would wait at this door, a door that has no entry. It's only exit only. And he would go in there and there was like a couple doors and there would just be one old security guard sitting on a folding chair. And Jan would kick the door open. And when he kicked the door open, all the people would run in. And then right over here was a staircase. And we'd run up the staircase as, as fast as you could until you got to the upper bowl of the arena. You'd come out and it would be completely dark. And he would do this after the show had started. And that was the door rush. And if you were able to get to the top, then you would just disperse somewhere throughout the arena, find a seat, and you were in. If you did get caught, which I don't think anybody did, because these these like security guards were like fucking you know Rip Van Winkle, like you know it was like Methuselah. And that's how we would get into shows that we wanted to um, see, but uh, but didn't quite have enough cash for the door rush. I wonder if Jan's still around. Who's your favorite Bible character? Well, Joshua. Why? Because he brought down the walls of Jericho. Is that the guy? Joshua. Um, love that stuff. 
Uh, wontons getting on my nerves. Idiot. Um, thoughts on Metallica's S and M two. Love it. Have you seen the uh, anesthesia pulling teeth with Lars and like the cellist of uh, of the San Francisco Orchestra? So I loved S and M one when it came out, like in ninety nine, and um, I love this one as well. Is it actually? Is it actually out now? I think it's out now. Um, William Simeon, what song that you've recorded would you say you put the most heart and soul into? There's a song on this next record, on this new record called I Still Burn, that I think will be our biggest song. I mean, Judas is obviously the anomaly, but I think I Still Burn has the potential to be as big, if not bigger, than Judas, if all the cards fall in the right place. And it took me... Um, a long time to sing it and to really sing it right and i was really 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 happy with it and really um really proud so i think you guys will like that one i still burn his name of the song so mark that down write it down and um and uh keep your eyes out for that uh jericho from the 80s who's your favorite wrestler for a worker not gimmick uh, well dynamite kid i loved i loved macho man randy savage ricky steamboat uh, I love the Rockers. Um, I loved Hogan. I think still Hulk is, is one of the best for just being a, a great baby face that really uh, knew his audience. But uh, Steamboat was probably the one. I forgot why. He didn't get a world title shot. Obviously, because Hogan was a good guy too. But it's like, well, fuck, put two good guys in there together. Steamboat's good enough. Um, I loved Owen Hart as well. Uh, Owen Hart, Shawn Michaels, and uh, Ricky Steam were kind of my three from a worker standpoint, although Savage is really good too. But I was also a Hulkamaniac. I love Hogan. I'll never forget when um, when they had the the, the 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 twin referee gimmick. Earl Hebner was the ref, and I think Dave Hebner came in or vice versa, versus Andre. My friend Wallace came running to the deli where I was working because I had to work that night. I didn't get to see it. He's like, you're not going to believe what happened. There's, there's a double referee and they got plus surgery and they, they brought him off and Hogan lost the title. And I'm like, what? Hogan lost the title? You're like, from how? Well, there was two referees, but there's one referee and he had a twin. And he's like, what are you, how much for the plastic surgery, brother? What are you talking about? And that's when we found out that this evil twin brother referee screwed Hulkster and, uh, and, um, and he lost the title. And then Hulkster was so mad that he threw Earl Hebner over the top rope and Andre was supposed to catch him. But he like just overshot everybody and ended up uh, in the highway. And that's also the classic Andre line where he was going to give the world, world tag team championship to Ted DiBiase. And it was the world championship. Not the world world. And it wasn't the tag team. But it was Andre. So what are you going to say? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Good. <laughs> Oh, guys, yeah, I know it's late, and I thank all you guys for being here. Um, and uh, uh, like I said, I knew it was late, and I knew I still wanted to um, do this for you guys, even if it was just a shorter show, because there's a lot of people from Europe watching and people in England and Italia, Italy, as they would say. Wesley Dahl, I like listening to The Rock of Jericho. You have great taste in music. Thank you so much. Um I appreciate that, and I have a show every couple of weeks on um, on Sirius XM Octane, and I play whatever I want, and uh, it was very, very cool. So check it out if you are so inclined. I play old stuff, new stuff, uh, new bands, and uh, yeah. All right, uh, a couple more questions, then we'll do the sing-along. Zuno PB, how many years of a career do you have left? Um, I don't know. Like I said, I thought in 2015 I might be done. I thought in 2005 I might be done. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm having some of the best times, uh, of, of my life, of my career. I'm completely, uh, uh, have creative fulfillment and, um, I'm just excited to be a part of this company, excited to, to help guys like Orange Cassidy get to the next level. And there's a whole locker room full of them. So, um, I ain't going anywhere soon. So. Uh, we need Rufus. Well, it was Ralphus, and he, I just found out he passed away like last year. So uh, there you go. Oh, God bless John Riker was his name. Uh, what's your all-time favorite match for you to have with Shawn Michaels? Well, I mean, gosh, I mean, the WrestleMania, the first one that we did was great. The latter match we had in Portland was great. Um, the whole unsanctioned match, that was, that was another great long storyline. So uh eric gee is back thanks for going all out with the mimosa mayhem match all you do for wrestling rock business thank you bud i appreciate that 
Uh, let's see. Um, any plans to wrestle in Mexico again? Uh, anytime. I'd love to go to Mexico again. I always had fun there. Jericho, you're awesome. Your band Fozzie's Kill Alive. Thank you. Um, are you doing Dark Side of the Ring Season 3? The answer is uh, yes, I believe. Uh, that is true. Um, so what are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do? One word. Clifford! Clifford! I have to tell Luther that, you, that Asher bombs the ass for Clifford! Ah, uh, so great. Um, you know, some of you guys are asking some questions that you're real kind of dicks. So um, be nice. Be nice. Uh, thoughts on the CM Punk? Always enjoyed working with Punk. Lots of fun. Um, do I ever think he's going to work again? Um, I don't know. It's been a while. You think he would have come back, but you never know. Uh, Mar Miasha J. Simmons says, Clifford! Ah, so good. Um, so what are we going to do? What, what's the uh, sing-along for tonight? Um, wow. Evil. Oh, look at this one. Clifford. I'm just going to do a show next time. Just saying Clifford. Uh, what, what, what I want orange cast in my podcast on orange cast in the Saturday night special. Sure. Absolutely. Um, but not right now. Thoughts on Darby Allen. Love Darby Allen. Um, so, all right. So let's do something from, uh, something from, uh, from man, my favorite Aussie album. And I think the song we should do is Flying High Again. I love that song. Um, it's a lot of fun to sing. Any Aussie song is fun to sing. Um, and I love the fact, and once again, there's so many idiots. There's, there's a big thing that was on the air uh, or an uh, article about how Ozzy has gray hair and Ozzy Osbourne looks older than he's ever looked. I'm like, it's the middle of a pandemic, and if Ozzy didn't get a dye job this week, like – F off. You know, it's just typical, like, people just trying to get reactions out of you and just being mean for the sake of being mean. And we're not mean here on the Sunday Special. We love everybody. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be around with all you guys. I actually have to go to the song on Spotify because you can't hear it uh, as well when I play it on uh, on that. So we're going to pull it up, and we're going to do a little uh, Ozzy Osbourne for the sing-along Flying high again right here on a Saturday night after the uh, Mimosa Mayhem match. So, are you guys ready? Are you ready? Uh, let me grab that here, and we'll take this over there, here, here. Okay. Are you ready for the sing-along? Here we go. Here we go now. Oh no! Here we go now. I got a crazy feeling I don't understand. You gotta get away from here. I'm feeling like I should have kept my feet on the ground, waiting for the sun to appear. Her mama's gonna worry. I've been a bad, bad boy. I know you're saying sorry. It's something that I enjoy. Does you can't see what my eyes see? And you can't be inside of me. I'm flying high again. Here we go. Hey, I can see through mountains, watch me disappear. Hey, I can even touch the sky. Swallowing colors of the sound I hear. Am I just a crazy guy, you bet. Her mama's gonna worry. I've been a bad, bad boy. And now you're saying sorry. It's something that I joy and you could be inside my head you'd see that black and white is red 
flying high again. Flying high again. We're flying high again. We're flying high again. Come on and join me. What a solo. Randy Rhodes fucking blast me. I never saw inside my head. People think I'm crazy, but I'm in demand. I never heard a thing I said. Mama's gonna worry. And I've been a bad, bad boy. No, you said sorry. It's something I enjoy. Flying high again. We're flying high again. We're flying high again. We're flying high again. Come on and join me. Come on and join me. Yeah. Amazing tune by the amazing Ozzy Osbourne and of course One, Randy Rhodes. Two, what a guy. It's a great uh Ozzy um documentary that's on A and E, I believe, on Monday. And so I will see that. It's always great hearing Ozzy and kind of hearing about his life. So um that's it. Another episode of Saturday Night Special. Thank you for joining me. I know it's late. And I appreciate you being here. Um, I would do a little bit longer, but I'm actually pretty burned out from uh, taking a bump into uh, a giant pool of mimosa. And I need something to eat because I'm hungry too. So uh, I'll be here for you guys. Glad that you uh, joined me. Jeremy Eggleston, huge fan from Gary, Indiana. Thank you for making AW exciting. Thank you so much. Kevin McCall, great singing, Chris. Thanks to you guys, man. Appreciate you listening. Uh, Eric Barboza, Randy was the goat of metal guitar. He's definitely one of them. I'd say that Randy, I think that Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen kind of changed the entire way rock guitar was played. Uh, obviously, Randy was more uh, uh, classically influenced, and Eddie was more more rock and roll type thing. But both were super innovative, and both were super genius. And uh, God bless both of them. Do you remember the moment you knew you wanted to be a wrestler? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I do know that I always kind of flirted with the idea because I used to watch wrestling with my grandmother and she hated the heels. She hated Jesse Body Ventura. And um I uh <laughs> I uh, loved him. I thought he was great and I couldn't you know I didn't want to disrespect my grandma but I was like this Jesse Ventura guy's the best so um and I think probably during that time is when I thought you know I really would love to try this whole wrestling thing. So um, that might be one of those things. So don't forget to your Postmates uh, code. We've had it um, going down, uh, scrolling here for the whole show. Postmates promo code Saturday night for 100 bucks in delivery credit for your first seven days. Just download the app and uh, put that into the, uh, the, the special codes and you'll get free delivery for seven days. So do that. Thank you. Thanks to Postmates too for sponsoring us. It's great. Uh, Jericho's living his best life right now. Ozzy Metal Mate. Yes, I am. And I love Ozzy. Would love to come back at some point. Uh, thanks for creating their circle. Best faction out of the biz. We just got the coolest new inner circle. I'll do the photo shoot today. It will be out soon. Um, and you guys will love it. 
looks great. I love the inner circle. I love we. I got. I know a lot of times it's just me doing stuff, but the inner circle is always included in what I do, and um, we will not be uh, breaking up anytime soon. Uh, Demo God rocks. Thank you, Owen. <laughs> I love the Roman Reigns heel turn. I love the pairing of um, Roman and Paul Heyman. I think it's great. And once again, you know that I've said this for years, that Roman is uh, going to be even bigger than, um, than 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 he has been or will be. Just let him be himself, and uh, he's going to be even a bigger star. So uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Right, there's uh, Walter. I think Walter, uh, who usually is ripped, start, and drunk by this point in time, uh, said he got to sing um, Judas in the arena tonight. So he was there, oh great. So Walter was actually at the uh, venue tonight and got to sing Judas. And you're right, it was one of those special moments. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I love, um, love having live crowds. And even if you can't hear them at all times, they're always super loud during that. So um, how did you survive that tightrope spot next to the tank? Well, it's pretty close. Trained professional. So thank you. I'm glad you picked that up. I got from a friend of mine. He, uh, he was a great skier. And he um, used to do this thing we call Lean Back Larry. Where he, would, like, he, was, he was the best skier. But he would go down past the lift line and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And be like, why is he skiing? He'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't ski. Meanwhile, he was completely in control the whole time. So... Um, I did my lean back Larry tonight uh, for the tight run spot. His name was Dave. He's passed away since, so God bless him. Uh, I'm graduating from Culinary College. College, got a shout out. Well, congratulations on graduating uh, Culinary College. Jesus. Culinary College. Um, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, my favorite part of Saturday Night Side Special. I'm glad I could be back with you guys, and hopefully we'll be able to do it again next weekend. And. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I suffer from insomnia, so I did say for this. Thank you, Mackenzie. And what a great way to end it off. It's a nice picture there with uh, with Billy Gray. So, uh, guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching uh, All Out. If you did, uh, if you didn't, you should. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad I was able to spend this time with you guys. So have a great week. Uh, check out Postmates. Don't forget, uh, promo code is Saturday night for free delivery for the next week. And uh, stay safe and be cool, and we'll see you guys very soon. So more cheers. More cheers, more beers, eh? Love you guys. Thank you.